And I can't find a seconder usually when I propose this, but I don't care. I don't need a seconder. My own opinion is enough for me, and I claim the right to have it defended against any consensus, any majority, anywhere, any place, any time. And anyone who disagrees with this can pick a number, get online, and kiss my ass. No representation is made that the quality of legal services to be performed are greater than the legal services provided by other lawyers. I'm Harry Steele. You found the Backstory Podcast, number 115. I have my client and partner in crime with us, not in studio today because of all the uh, play going around. How are you doing in Fairhope, Mr. Rip? Good. I don't want to be anywhere near you. I don't want to catch anything anybody <laughs> i don't blame you and uh raids are y'all seeing the same thing out there in houston absolutely huge spike in cases it's running through the schools it's running through the clubs it's running through everything out here so uh, paul you're on uh everybody's looking at a screenshot of uh the holman prison record for murray lawrence jr Right. This is a case that was brought to my attention about 18 months ago. Uh, Harry has taken part in it. So has several other attorneys. And uh, it's where a man was convicted just on what one person said. And that one person happened to be the actual murderer. And it's a pretty bizarre story. We're going to be going into it a lot deeper. We're going to be looking to um, have his case brought before the uh, Innocence Project. I think there's a, uh, and there's legal work being done right now on the case. So, Paul, can yeah. I show everybody a copy of the transcript of the trial that you and I have been putting tabs on? Oh, yeah. On? Look at that thing. It's, it's crazy, almost 2,200 right? pages. Yeah, but this, and I'm, this I'm is gonna the testimony the of the sheriff. This is what's he, interesting is the, the testimony of Sheriff Mack back when he was the uh, yeah, head of major captain, crimes. when he was a captain. And uh, the one thing about this that really is blowing everybody's mind is there's no witnesses. He has five alibis. There's no blood. Zero physical evidence. Zero. And, no and fingerprints. This no is the DNA. case where the, the medical examiner from Mississippi said that the victim was strangled, and they proved that he was shot and talked about a gun half the trial and they never tied the gun to a bullet or to the body or anyway right the medical examiner said sure he might have been shot but that was not my conclusion no that was a that was a dream and a concoction of the uh district attorney david whetstone at the time and he knew damn right well the guy was not shot and so the other a lot a lot more details later on folks but this is going to be a story that sticks with the RIP report until we get this guy out. And it may have some bearing on the district attorney's race because uh, our current district attorney was the judge that said in this case, Robert Is Wilkins. he running again? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah, this might. Yeah, well, let's throw that out there. We'll make sure that. So it could potentially everybody... affect two local elections. <clears throat> the DA right. and the sheriff. Anyway. We'll keep you informed. Uh, just and to Paul's credit, Paul has been bulldogging this thing, and now has an attorney with the Innocence Project that we've handed this thing off to. Um, but and it, maybe I'll relate this to you. So, um, Paul called me the other day, and he's reading through the transcript, and he goes, "Man, did you see this on page whatever?" So I went back and I went through my text. I did the same thing about a year ago. So it's not as fresh on my mind as it is as it is on yours, which is why I'm rereading some of it. I just don't have the hard drive space for, uh, you know, my goodness. How many days was this trial? Uh, a little over two weeks. Now, the entire transcript, we're going to get a thumb drive here in about a week with the entire transcript on it. And uh, I, I will uh, curate that and put up. Uh, well, maybe I won't do that until I talk to his attorney. But uh, anyway, interesting case. And, um, man, you talk about a miscarriage of justice. And this is, a local, this is a local man right here in Fairhope, Alabama, too. 
and, and the victim was local, and the and the um, half the of the perpetrators was, uh, were also known by law enforcement. Right, and the victim was from uh, Foley. Foley. Good kid. <clears throat> yes, crime. he was a good kid. In fact, Murray Lawrence didn't even know him that well. He knew who he was, but he didn't even know him as an acquaintance. Well, it's telling to me that what he's done since he's been behind bars, you notice the no tattoos, no scars, no marks, no, yeah, prison ministry right. type guy. Right. He's completed uh dozen of courses, never been in trouble the whole time he's been incarcerated. Uh, so for anyway, life, for sad, life, sad, sad, sad case. It's going to take a while to do this, but I think we got some dedicated people in there work for a while to get it done. Absolutely. So, um, speaking of local elections and just, you know, one of the nicest men I know, uh, representative Steve McMillan announced Friday that he has cancer. And so he will not be seeking re-election, which he already announced that. Right. But uh, what a shame. Who's running against him? Anybody come out yet? Uh, we'll get there. So the upcoming election, the primary is May 24th, primary runoff June 21st, general election November 8th. And, um, of course, if you have any questions, you call 937-0379. That's the local probate office who's in charge of the elections. They'll produce the ballots and coordinate all that stuff here locally so just uh to give you an idea of where the votes are coming from this is a population density map people per square mile and you can see the eastern shore is the most heavily populated uh, area of baldwin county and that'll come into play in the commission race because everybody runs by district but they're voted for at large by the entire county so you you may be running in district one but if you don't have District two people voting for you, you're not going to win. Right. Um, th these are the uh, Senate districts. You see Mr. Albritton's district runs the damn near a quarter of the state of Alabama. But, of course, it takes in all of the Porch Creek Indians' uh, interest, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, you know, some guy living down in Spanish Cove is going to have to drive two and a half hours to Bruton to see this guy. It's ridiculous. Here are the old house districts, and this is what Chris Pringle did to us just a few days ago, a few weeks ago. And you see, again, all this area here is rep is represented by somebody from Escambia County. Uh, and look at Bay Manette. Talk about zero respect for that place. has four house districts that separate that town. It's just unbelievable. So here are your commission districts. You see one, two, three, and four. And they are all up for grabs. But and they are all at large. They are all at large. Um, so here are the uh, positions that are up for re-election. Sheriff Coroner, Baldwin County Commission, Baldwin County School Board, District 4 and 8. The following individuals have qualified so far. And this is from the Republican side, okay? Sheriff mm -hmm. Hoss Mack, Coroner Brian Pierce, who, of course, works for Hoss Mack at Mack Funeral Home. He's the only person that could possibly arrest the sheriff, so he's kind of got the table run on that. County Commission District 1, Jeb Ball. County Commission 2, Jonathan Armstrong and Matt McKenzie. That's interesting, Matt McKenzie. Baldwin County Commission District 3, Billy Joe Underwood, who's the incumbent. And Baldwin County Commissioner Skip Gruber, District 4. Um. There must not be any, you know, if you're a judge, you can't run for re-election after you're 70. But I think Mr. Gruber's pushing 80. You know, sometimes uh, it's time to hang up the hang up the spurs, partner. I don't know, Matt McKenzie or uh, Jay Nay. Janae Dawson? Yeah. And uh, all other state offices, state house, state senate, district attorney, and judge qualify through the state party. Qualifying ends January 28th at 5 p.m. If you want to qualify with the Baldwin County Republican Party, you can contact Michael Hoyt, who was nice enough to send this email back to me. And uh, here are some issues that I foresee being uh, real problems for some of these incumbent county commissioners. Um, I can tell Jail you the, the the biggest public improvement project in Baldwin County history is the damn jail. What does that say? I mean, think about that. 
Six hundred. How much is it? Million. Sixty-five million. Sixty-five. Sixty-five million. And they're going to put it in a jail, all in a jail, and that's going to be the biggest one single project, isn't it? Beside the damn mega site. Yeah, and uh, if you notice, uh, bet- you see this picture here, and then you see the artist rendering. You know, one thing that's missing: the tower, concrete water tower. The only one in America. We're going to tear it down. Nope, nope, nope. I'm going to take you. I'm going to tell you, I swear, I don't know where I was, but it was somewhere on that last trip I made out west, and it was some little town in Kansas or somewhere, and I saw one of those towers like that. I swear I did. Well, I you need to call Guinness. According to Wikipedia, there's this. one here and one in France. I, one I here and one where? To this jail edition. Uh, one thing that you'll notice not just at the national political level, but at your local political level, is that the same people who will say, I think it's fantastic that we're spending $65 million on a new jail, are the same people who will say, I don't want to spend any money to give anybody anything that I don't feel like deserves it. If you have $65 million in a rural county like Baldwin County, and you're going to throw it into a jail, That tells me a lot about the county leadership. That tells me that they don't want to invest in any sort of social infrastructure. They don't want to invest in a lot of economic redevelopment. They'd rather invest in a jail to promulgate the pipeline to prison. Because if you asked anybody in Baldwin County, Alabama, and I would say just damn near anybody, if you did a straw poll and said, all right, we can either build a jail for $65 million or we could institute a or improve existing social programs to the tune of $10 million and bank the 60 million for debt service. And uh, that'll solve the problems that a new jail might yep. solve. I mean, that would be great. And I guarantee you nine out of 10 people are going to go, not just no, but hell no. I'd rather put somebody in jail I'd rather spend $100 to put somebody in jail than spend $10 to make sure they get proper education or make sure our social programs are improved to bring about an end to the pipeline to prison. And I think it speaks a lot to the county leadership that they would back projects like this without any kind of consultation with the public because the public is going to go behind it as well. And that really makes me sad. And I, I, I wish things were different. And I wish there was things we could do to make it different. And I think it's incumbent on the county leadership to consider things like that. This is another example of what the sheriff wants, the sheriff gets. And everyone trips over themselves to provide it for him. That's it. And that's, that's exactly my problem it. with the existing county commission, period. Right. And, you know, the jail system for the state is being threatened to be taken over by the feds. And the feds are saying that even though uh, Governor Ivey has come out with this package to build new jails, what they're saying is you're doing nothing immediate to resolve any of the problems. And that's where you're going to, Reigns. And I agree that, you know, most of these people are going to jail because we don't have the services to work with them or maybe divert them from jail. Instead, we're encouraging to throw them in jail. And in Baldwin County, if you call the sheriff's department, you better hang on because they're going to show up with their guns drawn. And I'm going to say something, and I hope this. I hope this. I hope this doesn't sound mean spirited, okay? But our our bench believes that they should have that jail full. Oh yeah! If there's 600 beds, there's going to be 650 people in it. If it's that, 951, there's going to be 955 people in it. Right, right. I'm just right. from a practical perspective. Uh, interesting fact: my first job was building that first jail tower for Stewart Construction Company when I was 15 years old. Really? I, yeah, and I and I go in that jail all the time. And if the son of a bitch was about to fall down, I'd tell you so, and I'd advocate for this. Okay. Man, that's not the case. Sixty-five million. Well, Baymanette's going to be known as a jail town now. 
Yeah, and it's like Doodle said, who's going to want to live in the place with the, you know, they got this mega prison right in the middle of town. Right in the middle of town. And and quite <laughs> frankly, our our courthouse, while they put a whole lot of lipstick on the pig, it's still a pig, and we need a new courthouse. And we should build one that looks like the old courthouse, not the Nikita Khrushchev. Well, you can't build one now because the they're putting all the money in the jail. That's right. Now, now our, we're obligated – you know, for the next twenty five years we've got to make debt service on this sixty five million dollars. Yeah, this is this is this is obviously Hoss Max money grab because nothing makes more money for the county sheriff's department than housing federal prisoners in a municipal jail or in a county jail. Or or, or housing NBOs or Alabama yeah. Department of Con- Department of Con- uh, Corrections. You know, you get X amount of dollars every day you house a, an Alabama Department of Corrections inmate. And, well, if, uh, you know, we're going to lose that $15 a year on the pistol permits, well, we might as well try to go for $30,000 a year to house Alabama inmates in our brand spanking new jail, which I'm sure Baldwin County is going to run so much better than they do the rest of the prisons in yeah. the state of Alabama. Well, it's not it's it's not it's not terrible. I know some people that work in the jail, and they they keep me informed. Um, the other issue that's going to roll some of these jokers up is this two point one billion dollar I ten bridge project. So today, I had an interesting mental exercise with myself while sitting in traffic, and I picked up the phone and I called Aldot. They couldn't answer the question either. So here's the question I posed: Just because our local MPO puts this is a prior. This project is a priority with the toll uh, included and all that in the transportation improvement plan. Does that mean that the director doesn't have the ability to take it off? I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure the the director of Aldot can. Uh, you know, that's that's my whole deep state theory. Um, is basically he can do whatever whatever he wants to, and he doesn't have to put this thing on there. At least I don't think so. Um, but anyway, they're supposed to get back with me to the answer to that riddle. But um, the bottom line is um, it's an unpopular project. The and project lot- is in its infancy. And when I say that, I mean it hasn't even really given birth yet. That's how far behind they are. Right. But there, But there's – besides these people on the MPO, who's really for a bridge that includes a toll? Nobody. Will Ainsworth just said I just that, that I just we have don't the money understand to do how it. You put a toll on I ten when it crosses the entire United States and there's no toll on it anywhere else. Well, I think it's going to be political issues for the incumbents. Yep. All right, Paul. Give me some landy up. Okay, Lanyap this week, you know, you can get it at the newsstand, get it delivered to you at the newsstand, it's free, or you can go online, uh, a lot of great articles, everything from uh, music venues to advertisement, and of course, politics, and the... uh, And oyster (coughs) season, dude, don't forget oyster season. Pardon? Oyster season. It's the cover. Well, well that's just what that guy with those idiot sticks. That's a real good uh, cover story article. We move with the oysters with reefs and recovery. Alabama's prolific tongers uh, are raking them in. It's a very good article. Two full pages by uh, Scott Johnson. A couple of things I thought were real interesting is that oysters were selling uh, as low as 40 cents a pound. Now they're at about a dollar a pound. And one of the things that uh, took a lot of recovery in Mobile Bay after the two or three hurricanes that hit us and then along with Katrina, Katrina cut the Katrina cut and, and Dolphin Island. And that increased the salinity, which affected the oysters. Now, a lot of that has been taken care of since then. But in the ni- in the 2019 2020 season, they ended with 11,258 sacks of oysters. A sack of oysters is somewhere right around 80 pounds. Uh, The largest that the state had seen in previous five years combined. In 2021 season, ending December 23rd, 
and 22,000 sacks were recorded. As of Christmas, they reported 45,000 sacks of wild oysters have been registered so far this season out of the uh, Bay Area. So very interesting. Talks about the culture and the people that are involved in it. I think you'd enjoy it. It's a very good article. Uh, another one that's coming up, of course, uh, we just got through talking about is the construction on the Baldwin County uh, Jail. I think we beat that up pretty much. I agree wholeheartedly that they could have come up with a lot better resources the county than to spend that kind of money. And I still do not understand how the sheriff's department can just has a blank check. Uh, <clears throat> next, we've got uh, buying time. The Corps extends the comment period on the controversial wetland project by Gabe Times. We've been talking about this several uh, issues, and the Corps has now extended the public comment time, so I encourage you to do so. Uh, the letter to the editor and another article that followed, uh, people are beginning to step up, step up and be a little bit more active on this environmental project. It's 1,200 acres, folk. Think about that. 1,200 acres, you won't be able to fish, crab, canoe, walk, swim, anything. So that's a lot. That is a lot of area uh, there. Uh, one other thing is, uh, and this is kind of dear to my heart, zoned out. RSA sues Baldwin County over the Port Point Clear Planning so you know, District by kids, Gabe Pine. What? Nothing. Go ahead. <laughs> and this is where uh, <clears throat> RSA owns Lakewood Golf Club and the Grand Hotel. And the proposer adopted boundaries for District 19 do not correspond to the voting precinct. And the commission made the determination to use the voting precinct boundaries was not feasible. But RSA has 351 acres within the district where new zoning ordinance have decreased the value of the property by prohibiting RSA from continuing development of the property for residential uses, also impeding the club's house exi uh, uh, existing use. I'm going to tell you, folks, in the Point Clear area, RSA has been a bully. Yep. They have the whole Point Clear area. The reason, the very reason that they got zoning down there was because of RSA. The first thing RSA does is come in there and tear out the gas station, the Marine gas station, and they want to build their own exclusive little uh, condos there. That got voted down, but we don't have a gas station up there anymore after 34 years. So uh, the next thing they wanted to do was take out part of the and, uh, and residential. Paul, let me, let, me, let me stop you there. That yeah. is important because if you have a boat down here, you have to ride an extraordinarily long way to get fuel. Right. And the Marine Patrol, too. If there's if they need fuel or they need to do something, they have to go all the way down to Fairhope as well. But RSA has been uh, proposing things that they want to do in that point clear area without listening to any of the uh, people that live there. And that's what's forced this issue. So I think that the county will stand pretty good on those grounds. We'll we'll see. And talking about the, uh, this goes right along with it, uh, Baldwin County 2030, our vision for the growth, uh, Baldwin County will be hosting in-person and virtual community meetings over the next six to eight weeks to receive public feedback on the county's strategy for addressing current and future challenges uh, with uh, growth. Now, uh, three meetings are coming up, Monday the 24th, will be at the Baldwin County Central Annex Auditorium, Robertsdale. Uh, Tuesday, the 25th, Baldwin County Fairhope Satellite Courthouse. And Tuesday, the 25th as well, between 5.30 and 7.30. The one in uh, Fairhope will be 10 to in the morning. The one uh, that night will be in Foley is between 5.30 and 7.30. Now, you can get more information from the planning department 
uh, 251-580-1655. And I really encourage you to take their survey. They have a survey where they're putting it out to the public. They want to hear your concerns uh, about the growth, about everything that's going on. I hope some of you will mention that uh, the unregulated sewage uh, issue should be... uh, Numero uh, uno. Correct. That should be talked about as well. And these zoning districts. uh, Understand that the zoning district, some people think, oh, well, that's taking away my property rights. No, that's not exactly true. It more or less protects your property rights unless you're wanting to sell to a gas station or do something like that. Uh, So trying to uh, stay within the bounds of reasonable growth and keep up with the infrastructure, you've seen Daphne and Fairhope come up with building moratoriums, and that's because they cannot stand up, cannot stay up with the uh, infrastructure. So please attend the meetings. Uh, Please Pay attention to the uh, uh, this 1,200-acre proposal of dump site for the spoils out of the bay because I don't think it's a good idea at all and listen to some of the scientists and people that know what they're talking about uh, hey, Paul, instead of people that just want to get the more revenue. Paul, you ever watch the Peanuts, the cartoon? The, the cartoon, the Peanuts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I feel like... Charlie Brown and the county commission is Lucy with the football because I helped participate in the Envision 2025 plan that uh, the two, you know, when they adopted it in 2007, I think in 2010, they threw the damn thing in the garbage. Right. So I'm really going out on a limb here to participate in this. I'm really getting tired of it. And just like, you know, folks in Fairhope. Um, remember all that stuff with the Greeno Road Overlay District, and you went to right. feed the meetings, and then they poo pooed it because right. it wouldn't let somebody do what they wanted to do, probably at the intersection of 181 and Fairhope Avenue, if I had to guess. You know what I mean. Right. 2010, 2010 had a profound effect on the county, the county commissioners that went in at that time. And let's and please let me never remind do that you, again. One of, those was, one of those was Elliot. So, uh, if at all possible, we James. need to get him out this year. Elliot and James. Dors- uh, uh, Elliot came later. It was James no, and Dorsey. Paul, let me let me interject something here. If there's one thing I learned, well, there's many things that I learned in my journalistic career, but one of the things that I learned, I learned working in the Florida Keys in Monroe County, Florida, for the Miami Herald. And one of them is that if you – don't have a decent plan for growth and you instate a moratorium to just stop all growth until you can manage to get a handle on it. The only handle you're going to be able to get on it is a bad one. And I'll point to Monroe County, Florida. When I was living down there, Monroe County, Florida is a, is a very environmentally fragile area. Uh, Harry will be the first one to tell you, you know, it's, it's a, it's very, very small pieces of land surrounded by the one of the most beautiful natural resources we have. And the John Pennekamp State Park and the only live coral reefs in the, in the United States. And what happened is they couldn't control exponential growth. So they put a moratorium in place that just said, we're not going to give any residential, commercial, nothing. We're not going to give any building permits until we can get a handle on this. And it took them about 11 years to get a handle on it. And they implemented one of the most cumbersome and ridiculous plans for controlled growth that I have ever experienced in my 48 years, 49 years on this earth. They started an environmental point system that basically set up the biggest mitigation bank I've ever seen. And if you're not familiar with a mitigation bank is, I, 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 urge you all to Google it and figure it out, where if you want to buy, you have to have X amount of credits to get a building permit for a home. And there were people down there that had owned property since the 1970s that once that plan got in place in the 1990s, did not have enough points to build a home. And there were people that were getting into their 80s and 90s and still did not have enough environmental points to build a home. If you don't get a handle on growth, 
and start doing some serious number crunching as to how it's going to affect your area. If you just slap a moratorium on it, you're not controlling growth. You're just postponing something really, really bad. Right. So everybody out there that's that's thinking about going forward with this moratorium business, take a look at Monroe County, Florida, and ask yourself, how has that made it better down there? While it has preserved a lot of the environment, it's done so with a steel grip that has absolutely choked growth. And now they have economic devolvement in that area, believe it or not. Okay, and it well, wasn't compounded by COVID. It actually started in the early 2000s. So so here in Baldwin County, Daphne and Fairhope have both institu- instituted moratoriums. Daphne on multifamily and Fairhope on pretty much everything. So... Um, the reason that that happened was the local governments were allowing too much development and the people raised hell. So I, I think it's maybe you be, need some different leadership, Daphne and Fairhope. I hate to use this term, but it's almost got to be a public-private partnership. And I don't mean that in the way that the public will fund a private venture. I mean that the, the public and the lawmakers have to get together. <clears throat> and I would advise two committees, one from the government and one from the people, and make them work together. I mean, put them in a room and say, you're not coming out until we figure something out. Yeah, but see, these because elected you, officials say we are the people and we are their will, and we are gonna and we know exactly what they want. Well, when you have to and buy obviously 80 they don't. acres, when you have to buy 80 acres of wetlands in Wisconsin to be able to build on a half acre in Fairhope, don't say I didn't tell you so. Yeah, there yeah. you go. All right, let's talk uh, the real story. Um, Alabama hospitals, ICU, starting to fill the crush of Omicron. Forty-eight children hospitalized with COVID. Um, the numbers are really bad, guys. Fifty-eight point six million infected in the U.S. with eight hundred and thirty-four thousand three hundred and twenty-one deaths. County uh, hot spots by county last week, hot spots by county this week, and I want y'all to watch these numbers for Baldwin County. Just look at the totals up top: thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty-two. All right, check this out: increase over positivity. Negative three weeks ago it was negative seventeen percent. The next week it's one hundred and sixty-nine percent more, and the next week. It's 46% more than that. Seven-day average cases, 300 per day. New and case, all the kids are in school. Yeah, well, watch this. Go back to new cases. There were 90 three weeks ago. Last week, there were 1,000. This week, there's 2,000. Do you see where this well, is Well, Alabama heading? always talks about ex- exponential growth. Yeah. Here we go. We got That's it for this for Dan Show. And I guess we will kick this around one last time. The January 6th Capitol riots, one year, one year later, D.C. remains on edge. Biden calls out Trump's responsibility in speech, marking one year since the Capitol riots. So you guys can take it from there. Well, well I'll tell you go this. ahead, Rain. I took the day off yesterday. I took the day off yesterday from social media. I took the day off from news and i took the day off from punditry uh today you know i'm back at it but i I looked at it yesterday as a day of mourning nationally there's nothing to celebrate i do there's nothing to clap or cheer about we marked one year since a insurrection attempted to take down the democracy of this country i don't feel good about it i don't feel better about it i look back on it as one of the darkest days in the history of this republic. Absolutely. And there are those that would disagree with me and point to things like Pearl Harbor and 9-11, but those were attacks on this country and horrific and horrible. And the loss of lives was, was overwhelmingly terrible. I look back at January 6th as an attack on our republic, as an attack on our way of life, as an attack on democracy itself. And while there were fewer casualties, and I mourned for the casualties on both sides that day, 
but the real damage done was showing that there are people in this country who still to this day don't understand how incredibly precious our democracy is and how it exists. And they would act on the recommendations of a charlatan, of a fool, to go and try to assert the very thing that makes our republic free, the very thing that guarantees their right to peacefully assemble and their right to say what they want without government infringement and the right to keep a press that's free. All of those things they put aside on the recommendations of a clown and said, you know what? I'm going to show up. I'm going to wreck some shit. They shit in the Capitol. They defecated in the hallways of the Capitol. They shit on this Republic. They erected a gallows to hang the vice president from. This was a terrible and horrific attack on our democracy. And I don't care who you are. If you cotton to this, as they say down in Baldwin County, you're part of what is going wrong with this country. January 6th, I'm always going to mark as a sad day, as a bad day for this country. Sure, thousands of lives weren't lost, and thankfully not. But it's still a day that darkened our history greatly. And I'm not going to celebrate it. I'm not going to finger point. But the U.S. Department of Justice is making people pay the consequences for it. And I think the consequences are going to be a little bit more far reaching once a few things come to light. So former yeah. McCarthy staffer says Mo Brooks was glad cheered on from in while uh, from inside the Capitol on January 6th um, that uh, Capitol rioters suspected of leaving the pipe bombs is still at large one year later. Yeah. Yep. Over, it's over it's 700 it's uh, over 700 people are facing charges so and, I, uh, many of them said that they felt compelled to march on the Capitol because the president told them to go there yeah it's president sad that there Trump are this there. many stupid people in America that's what's sad president, correct and our former president has yet to step up and help one of those damn people that are now some facing over five years in jail. So did you it's see not, the statement? It is not anything to celebrate. You're right, Reigns. It's a sad day. It's a black eye for America. Okay, well, it ain't Pearl Harbor. Um, did you see the statement from John o Day, John, Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States? I did not. More lies and more makeup <laughs> on the planet. It's just crazy. It, it really is. So uh, anyway, I thought I would uh, share that to wrap things up. Uh, well, we have to, I want to mention a few things. You got anything else, Harry? Uh, just a an ad for uh, ancestry dot com. Okay, let me hit a few things, and then you do that. Uh, one is that uh, people that own a uh, Dr. Horton house in Mobile and Baldwin County, over four thousand have been built. Uh, there's now a class action suit going on. Uh, involved with this housing and that they are inferior built and some of them may cost as much as $100,000 to bring up to code. So if you're in a DR Horton house, you might want to do a little research and find out what's going on there. <laughs> some of the issues that we have that uh, are still pending is uh, with the RIP report anyway, is we're still wondering why Jack Burrell on November 15th resigned as uh, president of Fairhope Council, and since then he's been quieter than a mouse, so it must be really good. I can't wait till we learn what that is. Uh, the other thing is we are still, uh, Harry and I, still waiting to go back to on the writ of mandamus over the executive director, Tom Albritton, and we'll be keeping you up on that. And then latest around here in uh, Fairhope, of course, is the incident with the kids on that wrecked the boat at 2.30 in the morning on November 22nd at Point Clear. It appears now, allegedly, that Judge Norton's son was driving the boat. One of them is critically injured and still in the hospital. 
we got a uh, police report back, but the police report didn't have an accurate address of where the incident happened or the boat registration number. So we, I did, I called the Leah and the Marine patrol and asked them when we would be getting a report and told them of the uh, podcast allegations that were made and promptly sent it to them. And they said that they are taking every bit of caution to come out with an accurate report. So we'll be on top of that to find out how uh, this spins out. Y'all got anything else you want to talk about? No, not really. Uh, just everybody stay tuned. It ought to be an interesting year. With, yeah, with uh, the coronavirus with especially. And especially the, with midterm. And two two months of productivity loss because of, uh, you know, maybe people aren't going to die. It doesn't seem to be as bad, but uh, we're going to have a terrible loss of productivity in this country because of the illnesses. Get vaccinated. You people are causing all this to happen. All right, guys. Y'all have a good one. All right. You too, Harry. Rains.